At Seaplast, we believe that a great roof, one that is still performing long after the guarantee runs out, takes more than great products. It takes a successful partnership, one that combines quality products with thoughtful specifications, responsible maintenance, and professional applications. Proper roof system application requires a basic understanding of flashing details. No matter how good the roof system, it will fail without proper detailing. Most roof leaks come at perimeters and penetrations, so a great deal of attention must be paid to the proper handling of waterproofing at these critical transitions. The hallmark of Seaplast's design philosophy is that our details are conservative, redundant, and consistent. You know the problems and delays that can occur when you find surprises on a job, unusual and unexpected conditions. A consistent approach recommended by the manufacturer allows you to make an informed decision as to how to treat these conditions, resulting in better applications. The accessory products required for detailing include primer, plastic cement, adhesive, and sealant. Seaplast offers these items as part of a full line of roof application accessory products. Seaplast PA1021 plastic cement, PA1125 primer, PS304 elastomeric sealant, and PA311 adhesive are formulated for use with Seaplast roofing materials and have excellent performance histories. In the details that follow, PA1021, PA1125, PS304, and PA311 should be used whenever primer, plastic cement, sealant, and adhesive are needed. There are three basic application methods that can be used to apply Seaplast roofing membranes. Hot asphalt, cold adhesive, and torch. Your decision on a particular method will be determined by specific roof conditions and the roofing product that is being used. Regardless of which application method you use to adhere the plies, the detailed procedures we are about to outline remain the same. Conventional torching equipment utilizes an open flame, so there are obviously safety precautions that must be observed when using a torch. CPLAS strongly recommends that contractors using torch application contact the National Roofing Contractors Association for complete information on the Certified Roofing Torch Application Program, known as CERTA. The CERTA program includes not only safety training, but also industry requirements for torch applications. While every effort has been made to make the contents of this presentation consistent with CERTA requirements, it does not, nor is intended to, include comprehensive information on those requirements or act as a substitute for CERTA training. CPLAST recommends that in Canada, either local torch safety guidelines or CERTA regulations be followed. Because some substrates may present a fire hazard when roofing materials are applied with a torch, CERTA requirements include and stress the importance of keeping approved fully charged fire extinguishers nearby and conducting a fire watch following all torch applications. There are two fundamental rooftop conditions, flanged metal details and vertical to horizontal transitions. We apply our conservative, redundant, consistent design philosophy to both. When you are dealing with a typical parapet wall, begin by priming the wall above the cant with a roller or brush and Seaplast primer and allow it to dry thoroughly. With cant strips laid in place dry, fully adhere the base ply to the substrate until you reach the bottom of the cant. Leave the base ply dry on the cant. By doing that, you'll create a slip joint at this critical juncture. Next, you're ready for application of the reinforcing sheet. Cut a strip in ply of base ply material. The strip in ply should have a width that will extend 2 to 3 inches above the cant and at least 3 inches onto the roof surface beyond the cant. Fully adhere the strip and ply over the cant, wall, and roof surfaces. At this point, the roof is in the dry because the first ply of roofing and first ply of flashing are in place. This is not a temporary water cutoff. It's the first layer of the permanent waterproofing solution. All laps should be tight and top edges temporarily covered or sealed to prohibit moisture entry. Once a large roof area has been put in the dry, excess roof traffic from other trades has slowed down, and the roof surface is clean and dry, 
the finish ply can be solidly adhered to the base ply. Run the finish ply to the top of the cant, adhering it to the base ply already in place on the cant. Chalk a line on the roof surface parallel to the wall, a minimum of 4 inches from the cant. The area from your chalk line to the top of the cant is the flashing preparation area. If the finish ply in the flashing preparation area has a foil surface, that surface must be primed with Seaplast PA1125 liquid primer before adhering the flashing sheet. If the finish ply in the flashing preparation area has a granule surface, that surface must be prepared to accept the flashing sheet in one of two ways. The granule surface can be coated with liquid primer, or the granules can be torched and troweled into the sheet. When you are priming, make sure the primer has dried thoroughly before you begin applying the flashing. When you are torching and troweling, be sure to keep the trowel clean and hot to push the granules into the sheet more easily. To apply the final ply of Varol flashing, cut the Varol to size off of the end of the roll. Measure from the highest point beneath the counter flashing above the roof plane, making sure it is a minimum of 8 inches above the roof plane, down the wall, over the cant, and out 4 inches beyond the toe of the cant to determine the size of the Varol flashing piece. In this two-piece wall treatment, there is no counter flashing. Measure the Varol base flashing piece to extend a minimum of 8 inches above the roof line. You will be torching the Varol flashing piece into place. When working with a torch, it is important to heat the material to a high enough temperature to ensure complete adhesion. However, it is possible to overheat the Varol as well. There are physical changes you can observe on the back of the sheet that will let you know how well you're heating. On a sheet that's not hot enough, you will still see sand and you won't see any bubbling. An underheated sheet will not adhere to the substrate. A correctly heated sheet will have an even slow bubbling in the asphalt like you see here. Going beyond this stage will result in overheating and running asphalt. Starting at the low point of the roof, torch the Varol base flashing in place. By starting at the low point of the roof, you will ensure that water will flow over the flashing laps rather than into them. The Varol should be applied vertically, always working to the selvage edge. Position the sheet carefully, folding the base flashing down and resting it on a damp sponge and trowel. The damp sponge will keep the Varol off of the field of the roof. With the sheet in position, you are ready to begin torching. Use the sponge to lift the heated Varol and press it into place. Fold up the remainder of the flashing piece, holding it in place with your trowel. Torch the underside carefully, making sure to get full adhesion. With the Varol base flashing in place, use the damp sponge to apply pressure to it to ensure that you have made full contact with the substrate. When you are applying pressure to the Varol, take care not to deform the waffle pattern in the surface of the material. Run a heated, round tip trowel along the edges of the Varol to top seal and ensure tightness. Inside and outside corners along the parapet wall require special attention and patience. Full adhesion of the flashing to the parapet wall is critical here. You can achieve full contact by planting your angle cuts in the base and finish ply materials to wrap the corners of the wall. Two angle cuts are all that's necessary to tightly wrap the corners. Remember that all foil areas to be adhered to must be primed. Then torch the body of the flashing piece first. Torch the flaps created by your angle cuts next. Since the next piece of a raw will be used to create a finished corner, it should be cut to terminate at the edge of the corner. This termination should be clean and straight. Again, remember to prime the foil with C-plast primer in areas where adhesion to another piece of Varol will be necessary. The parapet wall detail we just saw results in a minimum of 300 pounds of base flashing over 440 mils thick, including four plies of glass reinforcement. This same procedure can be applied to curbs and most other vertical to horizontal transition areas. This flashing detail can be completed using C-Plast's granule surfaced Paradean 40FR applied in PA828 flashing cement. To apply Paradean 40FR, pre-cut the material to size from the end of the roll, 
allowing a factory selvage for laps, and position the pre-cut sheets along the wall, granule surface down. Apply a thin coat of PA-828 flashing cement to the substrate and to the back of the pre-cut sheet with a notched trowel. Apply the Paradean 40FR to the wall and mechanically fasten the top edge of the sheet. Apply pressure to the surface of the sheet with a roller to ensure complete contact with the substrate. Now, let's look at flanged penetration details. In all cases, Cplast uses a one-ply under the flange, two plies over the flange design. To apply this design guide on a roof edge detail, begin by fully adhering the base ply to the roof edge. Let the base ply extend over the edge of the roof a minimum of four inches or to below the wood blocking, whichever creates the furthest extension, and leave this extended portion dry. Prime the edge metal and let it dry. Once it is dry, set it along the roof edge in Cplast PA1021 plastic cement. After setting the edge metal, mechanically fasten it into the nailer using a 3-inch OC stagger pattern, like you see here. Then adhere a strip-in ply of base ply material that covers the fastened edged metal flange and extends 4 inches beyond the metal flange onto the roof surface. Fully adhere the finished ply, extending it to the roof edge. Finally, apply a consistent solid bead of Cplast PS304 elastomeric sealant to the space between the edge of the finish ply and the raised portion of the metal roof edge. The waste stack penetration detail follows the same general construction design used with the detail we just reviewed, making necessary modifications to accommodate the shape of the stack itself. First, adhere the base ply to the substrate, cutting the material to fit around the base of the waste stack. Then, prime the flange of a soldered lead flashing jack and let it dry. Once dry, fit it over the stack and set it in Cplast plastic cement. Use a rubber mallet to conform the lead to the stack and substrate. Then, fully adhere a strip-in ply target that extends from the base of the stack to four inches beyond the lead flange. Now you're ready to adhere the finished ply, which is most easily done by cutting the material in two pieces to fit neatly around the base of the waste stack. Finish by running a bead of PS304 elastomeric sealant around the base of the stack to seal the exposed edge. Because the drain lead is incorporated into the roof system, a drain detail is treated like any other flanged metal detail one ply under and two plies over the metal flange. Begin the drain detail by fully adhering the base ply over the drain area using Cplast PA1021 plastic cement to adhere the final six inches of base ply around the drain opening. Carefully cut the base ply material into the drain. Set a 30 inch by 30 inch square of primed four pound lead flashing in plastic cement around the drain. After setting, you can easily form the lead to the substrate with a rubber mallet. Whenever there is a chance that debris will accumulate in the drain, temporarily fill the drain with paper. Adhere a strip-in ply target of base ply material over the lead flashing. The target should extend from under the drain's clamping ring to four inches onto the roof beyond the lead flashing. Again, Cplast PA1021 plastic cement should be used to set the final six inches of the target. Adhere the finished ply and cut out the portion of it that is covering the drain opening. Be certain that the finished ply extends under the clamping ring. Tighten the clamping ring and clear the drain of your paper and any other accumulated debris. In cases where the drain is highly recessed, aluminum or stainless steel verol should be used instead of the granule surfaced finished ply in the entire sump area. The verol can be torched. Torch applied Varol is easy to form in such applications. When torching Varol in the sump area, never direct the open flame at the penetration. Alternatively, aluminum Varol can be applied in the sump area using Cplast solvent-free flashing cement. The Varol should extend three inches beyond the strip and ply target on all sides. Prime a border a minimum of four inches wide around the Varol before you apply the finish ply which should be solidly adhered to the primed Varol surface.
As you have seen, using the conservative, consistent, redundant approach to details gives you logical steps that can be applied in many roof situations. The redundancy of plies just demonstrated is consistent with all similar C-plus details. These guidelines hold when dealing with curbs, expansion joints, equipment frame supports, vents, and other metal flange details or vertical to horizontal transitions. If you are ever caught in an unusual situation, the simple guidelines we just presented will give you some general direction. Of course, with this program, we can't review every possible non-standard situation you may see. As with other roofing situations, there will be unique or unusual detail conditions that should be evaluated on an individual basis. If you are unsure about a detail, or have any questions concerning CPLAST's detail design philosophy or our products and service, please contact your local CPLAST representative.